Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a road, connect, a road connecting Jackson and Laurel counties is closed after flooding damaged a bridge. The legislators return to Frankfort next week. Some of the issues up for discussion, the pension crisis, vaping restrictions, sports wagering, and the legalization of marijuana. Plus, Governor Andy Bashir is making good on his campaign promise to defend Kentucky teachers. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 4.59 on January 2nd. I'm Madison Pergram, and thank you for joining us on Mountain News This Morning on this Thursday morning, getting closer to the weekend. But it is a little chilly out there. Let's go to Brandon Robinson. Brandon. It's a little cold this morning. It is. In some spots, it's a little colder than it is in others. But as we take a look at your forecast this morning, unfortunately, these clouds that are starting to build in this morning are going to give way to some showers later today and some heavier bands of rain possible for the next couple of days outside WYMT. Fairly quiet this morning. Temperatures, as Madison mentioned, in the low 30s in some spots there, 31 right here in Hazard, 27 in Ashland. But uh, mid to upper 30s, even some 40 showing up across the board this morning. So ridges definitely warmer than some of those valleys. The winds start to crank in from the south. That's going to bring some warmer air our way as we head to the next couple of days. But you will need to scrape some frost off in some locations this morning, especially areas that are a little bit colder. I had to do that on my window this morning. So give yourself an inner two extra. But your out the door forecast, mainly cloudy. We'll not see some peaks of sunshine early, but then we'll see those rain chances increase as we head throughout the late morning and into the afternoon hours, topping out right around 50. The rest of the forecast is on the way here in just a little bit. Madison. Thank you, Brandon. Well, a road connecting Jackson and Laurel counties is closed after flooding damaged a bridge. A bridge over the Rockcastle River was damaged during Sunday night's flooding. This is in the Letterbox community, and not having the bridge is a major headache for those living nearby. Yeah, the gentleman that was here just a minute ago has a, has a farm just on the other side of the river, and in order to get over there, he's going to have to go 18 miles out of the way with his tractor just to get over to where his cattle is because of the bridge being out. Now, there is no timetable on when the bridge could be reopened, and county officials say because of the holidays, they have had trouble contacting officials in Frankfurt. And Martin County is losing one of its community staples as Inez IGA prepares to close its doors. The store, which was also known as Inez Supermarket, then ShopRite, before becoming an IGA, has been part of the Inez community for 60 years. Store owner Judith Owsley inherited the business from her father. She says she has worked hard to keep the store going, but the economy and the big box stores became too much to keep the doors open. She says the Warfare IGA will remain open and encourages his customers to shop there. And legislators return to Frankfurt next week. The first day of the 2020 legislative session is Tuesday. This is a 60-day session and it's scheduled to adjourn April 15th. Lawmakers are required to pass a two-year spending budget this year. Among other issues, they will likely take up the pension crisis, vaping restrictions, sports wagering, and the legalization of marijuana. And Governor Andy Bashir is making good on its campaign promise to defend Kentucky teachers. He's rescinding a decision made during the Bevin administration calling teacher sick outs a violation of state labor laws. In a release, Governor Bashir said that those teachers were wrongly accused. I think with the governor um, that is supportive of education, I think it will be a different environment and a different feeling this year. Following Tuesday's announcement, Bashir's Labor Cabinet Secretary Larry Roberts wrote a letter to the Inspector General saying teachers were exercising their constitutional rights during the rallies. And thousands of participants performed in the streets of London, England for the city's New Year's Day parade on Wednesday, including one marching band from West Virginia. More than 100 members of Marshall University's Marching Thunder Band made the trip across the pond to march along the two-mile route in front of an estimated audience of 600,000 people, with countless more watching around the globe. The cherry on top, the band was at the front of the parade. Song selections included Alabama's Mountain Music and John Denver's Country Road. This is the first time the parade has been broadcast in the United States. And some runners started off their new year with a 5K. This was a 2020 Hangover Classic in Shelbyville. The annual race recently moved from Louisville to Clear Creek Park. One runner went to bed before the ball dropped last night to get ready for the big day. Because it's the first day of the year and want to get it off to a great, great start, 
and it's a beautiful day to start a race. Mary also says her New Year's resolution involves running. She wants to do more 5K and 10Ks this year. In 2020 may be the year you get fewer annoying robocalls. President Donald Trump signed a law Monday increasing fines for companies using the phone to hawk illegal financial schemes and other services. The Trace Act gives officials the authority to fine companies $10,000 for each illegally placed call. The new law comes after the Federal Communications Commission announced a nationwide crackdown on robocalls in June of 2019. The Trace Act is a bipartisan measure passed by the House and Senate last year. And just in time for 2020, WYMT's parent company, Gray Television, is teaming up with the Opry Entertainment Group to launch a new television and streaming channel. Its debut was on New Year's Day, and we've been listening to that country music this morning in our newsroom. Circle is all about celebrating country music and the country lifestyle. You will likely need to do a rescan to pick up the channel. We have information on how to do that on our website at WYMT.com. Well, thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up, one woman was killed in a New Year's celebration in Houston after being struck by a bullet that fell from a celebratory gunshot into the air. The first day of 2020 was a nice one, but that trend will not continue as we head toward the end of the week and the weekend. I'll have the latest forecast about three minutes.